Hey there folks and welcome back to my channel. Today we're picking up on my harm reduction series and we're talking all about smoking. Most specifically in this video I'm going to be talking about nicotine and nicotine smoke. Uh, if you want to see me do a video about marijuana and marijuana smoke let me know. Um, but nicotine is generally what's going to be a little bit more harmful to your piercings and what I feel like would be beneficial to talk about. So nicotine in general can be harmful to your body for a whole host of reasons. But if we're talking about piercings, we kind of want to specifically focus on the mouth. And the biggest factor is that nicotine really, really dehydrates the mouth, especially with daily usage. Dehydrating the mouth can lead to simple issues like bad breath and bad odors, but it can also lead to a buildup of tartar and plaque and bacteria in the mouth that can cause things like cavities, gum disease, gum loss and erosion, and if we're talking about having oral piercings and piercings in our mouth, it can cause a lot of damage to our piercings as well. Arguably the biggest concern with nicotine consumption in the mouth is gum disease, and gum and periodontal disease can be really, really serious really quickly. Obviously the safest thing, just in general, but especially if you have oral piercings, would be not to smoke, um, and I think we all know that. Uh, but the goal of my harm reduction series is just that. It's to provide harm reduction. Smoking is an addiction, and for many people, it is not something that they are just going to drop because they got a piercing that they're excited about or because they know it's unsafe. But there are things that we can do to help minimize the harm that nicotine causes to our mouth and our piercings to try and manage things a little bit safer. And that's what I want to talk about today. So the biggest thing when it comes down to nicotine and piercings and smoking and piercings is really how old the piercing is, what stage it is in the healing. Talking about a body piercing that you've had for a very long time, it's very well healed, it may still get irritated and have issues with smoke, but generally it's probably not going to be too bad. Where we're really concerned is when we're talking about a new piercing, a healing piercing. Smoking nicotine can definitely cause issues for a still healing piercing. It causes you to have dry mouth, which can really upset the natural flora and fauna inside your mouth, which are your really important bacteria fighters and healers while you're healing a fresh body piercing. Residue from nicotine and smoke can also build up on your jewelry and get inside of your still healing piercing, and that can cause some very, very serious problems for a piercing. Generally, when we see someone who's using nicotine a lot while they're healing their piercing, we can see sometimes these really large irritations. They're almost like fleshy looking bumps that form on the inside. And we also oftentimes see a lot of like a yellowish secretion. Um, when we're seeing someone who's dealing with irritation from nicotine, the secretion from the piercings oftentimes has a pretty distinct color. But these irritations can be very, very difficult to get to go away. So our best option is gonna be to try and prevent them. Now, obviously, ideally, you just wouldn't smoke while it was healing, but if it's possible to cut down on smoking, that would be great. So if you know you're getting an oral piercing, maybe instead of smoking five times a day, you can try smoking twice a day while the piercing is healing to try and give it a little bit more time to heal. Also, be honest with your piercer going into it that you are someone who smokes and that could be a concern for healing. If a client is ever honest with me about that, it totally doesn't affect me piercing them, but I am typically going to suggest using simpler jewelry that's going to be a little bit easier to heal with. And I'm going to suggest a longer healing time because nicotine can affect your immune system and especially immune health within your mouth and can slow the process of healing piercings. So while a, one person might have a labrette piercing that heals in like three months and it's fine, someone who might be smoking more often might find that their labrette piercing is taking six or even nine months to fully heal, partially because of that nicotine smoke, but also because of the dry mouth and the way that affects how we heal in our mouths. Now a really common misconception when it comes to smoking and oral piercings, especially healing ones, is that if you just rinse with mouthwash after every time you smoke, you're gonna be fine. Uh, and this is actually a terrible thing to do because you can overuse mouthwash and it can cause its own damage. That can cause sores on the insides of your cheeks from overuse of harsh mouthwash. It can further contribute to drying out your mouth uh, and leaving you without important flora and fauna inside your mouth and affecting your salivary ducts. And overuse of mouthwash can even cause thrush and yeast issues inside the mouth. So if you are smoking, 
please don't rinse with mouthwash after every single time you smoke that's way too much what you can do is rinse your mouth out thoroughly with cool clean water so if you know you're a smoker and you're healing some oral piercings keep a water bottle on you and once you're done smoking Give it a good rinse really swish it around make sure you're cleaning the piercing it wouldn't be a terrible idea to clean the outside of the piercing as well just to be extra sure that things are good this may seem a little obvious but if we're not doing like a centered piercing if we're doing like a librette piercing off to one side or a monroe piercing off to one side um try smoking away from where your piercing is if you're able to also be gentle in how you smoke. The suction created by inhaling very sharply can sometimes cause issues and irritation for people while their piercings are healing. So just try and be gentle with how you smoke and take things a little easier. Another really important pro tip is to smoke things that have filters. I know a lot of folks prefer to roll their own or use their own raw tobacco or their own products, um, but using a filter really does help make it safer as far as the content of the smoke that's ending up in your mouth. So using filtered products does really help. And while this video is not about this, I do think it's worth mentioning that chewing tobacco is definitely like the worst thing you could do as far as uh, nicotine and tobacco products with oral piercings. Uh, so if you are someone who chews, maybe really think about switching to smoking if you're healing a lip piercing or an oral piercing are someone who's a smoker and you're getting a brand new oral piercing, be honest with your piercer. There's oftentimes a lot that we can do to work with you during a healing process to try and make sure that things heal a little bit better and also just keep an extra eye on things to prevent any irritations that may occur from smoking. Now, if you have healed piercings, the best thing to do is just really maintain them well and keep them clean. Make sure you're brushing, flossing, rinsing two to three times a day and incorporate cleaning your piercings as a part of that. It also may not be the worst idea to go in and see your piercer for a deep cleaning on your jewelry every couple of months to make sure everything's looking really good. Generally, healed piercings fare pretty well with smoking and nicotine usage. Every now and again, they may flare up and get sore and swollen and irritated, and if that happens, pop back into your piercer to see a checkup, but once they heal, they generally tend to do okay. The hardest part of this process for folks is getting the piercing to heal in the first place, and that's when we want to try and be really careful. Now, of course, I'd be remiss to make this video without discussing some general harm reduction that's really important if you are a smoker as well. Cutting down and temporary abstinence are some of the most effective ways that you can try and manage a smoking addiction. And getting a new body piercing can be a really good motivator to help with that. So maybe for the first week or two that you have your new piercing, you're gonna agree not to smoke for just that time period. Or maybe if that's not realistic, you can agree to cut it down. Maybe you can quarter or have the amount you currently smoke at least for the first couple of weeks with your piercing to try and help it heal through that healing phase and use working on that piercing as a little bit of an extra goal or a little motivation boost to help you with that. There's also a lot of evidence that switching to a non-tobacco containing nicotine replacement product is very helpful as far as quitting and is a lot safer for you than tobacco containing products. I'm gonna go ahead and in the comments section of this video below, I'm gonna link some resources for tobacco harm reduction that also go over some of the studies and information out about nicotine alternatives that may be better suited to you than smoking. And that could also help you, whether it's permanent long-term help with dealing with this or whether there are products that you just explore while you have a healing oral piercing and once it's fully healed, you go back to your usual. Either way, I wanna make sure that you have access to the options. You can see that there's other choices out there that may make things easier for you to heal but also be healthier for your body. Also, remember that this can dehydrate your mouth, so good oral health care is really, really important. Please make sure you're brushing, flossing, rinsing three times a day. If you are struggling with dehydration and dry mouth, talk to your dentist or your dental technician and see there are prescription mouthwashes and prescription products that can help with the symptoms of dry mouth and help to kind of like recalibrate moisture and hydration within your mouth. Also make sure you are seeing your dentist and getting your teeth cleaned regularly, especially because of the risk of gum and tooth disease from smoking and nicotine and tobacco usage. Going in and seeing a doctor regularly and making sure that your teeth are doing good is so important. My page is always going to be a safe space for clients and people of all walks of life. And my goal in this harm reduction series is to share non-judgmental information to help folks in different situations be able to get and have the piercings they enjoy and still lead a healthy lifestyle. Whatever your relationship with smoking, nicotine, or tobacco products is, I don't think you need to feel ashamed about it. And there's also nothing wrong with implementing harm reduction strategies. 
it's awesome that some people are able to just quit cold turkey and be fine, but that's statistically not the reality for many. So please, if you are someone who struggles with these issues, be gentle on yourself, be realistic on yourself. And also remember that harm reduction is an absolutely valid goal if abstinence isn't a goal that is realistic for you or that you're interested in currently. And to any piercers watching this at home, I would strongly encourage you to try to adopt a harm reduction mentality when it comes to working on your clients. Our clients, especially those that struggle with smoking, tobacco, and nicotine, already don't get the best experiences when they go to their dentists or their doctors usually, and the last thing they need is a similar experience from us. We can be realistic about the concerns that smoking can cause for healing body piercings while also being realistic about what we can ask the client to do. Simply telling our clients, just don't smoke while it's healing, doesn't really paint a full picture of their options. Would it be the best if they didn't? Yeah, sure. But is there a lot of other stuff that they can do instead to still heal their piercing and live the lifestyle that's comfortable for them? Yeah, absolutely. There's almost always going to be a middle ground, and I hope this series helps people find it. As per usual, if you like my content, please hit like and subscribe. Your support means the world to me, and I can't wait to sit down for my next part in this series and keep trying to cover all these important topics for y'all. Have a great rest of your day. Bye!